Good day. As a general rule, movie-based video games are terrible, horrible, and generally just bad. Now, there are, of course, exceptions to this rule, but rarer still are games that surpass movies themselves. That is the case with Alien 3. You see, Alien 3 was probably one of the worst movies ever made. It was boring, slow-paced, and generally was a self-parody unto itself. And it really showed us just how bad Alien could have been had it been handled wrong. Surprisingly enough, just about every Alien 3 game was actually quite good. And each of them had their own strengths and weaknesses. But on the whole, the majority of them were actually quite playable and rather enjoyable. The first Alien 3 game we're going to be taking a look at is the rather unimaginatively named arcade game simply titled Alien 3 The Gun. The name can't get much more direct. Alien 3 The Gun. It's a light gun game based upon Alien 3. You know, with Turok, the direct title actually worked in its favor, but in this case, it just seems that the developers were rather lazy when coming up with the name. Uh, we need a name for a game based on Alien 3 that uses a light gun. Okay, why don't we call it Aliens Acid Rain? No, no, that's way too complicated. Why don't we just call it Alien 3 The Gun? Alright, let's go to launch. Let the name set the tone for this game, because this has got to be one of the laziest productions that I have ever seen. It seems like they put little to no effort in this game at all. The light guns look nothing like pulse rifles, but that is to be expected as Alien 3 had little to do with aliens. The game begins with a text crawl that is not only bad English, but also rather idiotic as well. We raced to rescue the spaceship Sulaco. After receiving the urgent message, we found an army of unknown creatures, the aliens. What? Okay, the, the first thing that's wrong with this statement is if it's an unknown army, then how do you know what to call them? Second, who sent the message? And third, who's we? This is what I have been able to determine as to what the story is supposed to be. The Colonial Marines send only two Marines at a time on rescue missions. I guess recruitment is down. And basically, these two Marines experience the events of Alien 3. I can only assume Ripley Newton Hicks became Alien Feed. You know, that sounds awfully similar to the plot for Aliens Colonial Marines. And that game better bloody well be made! You got Brutal Legend, so you can get this one too! Gameplay is standard light gun fare. You drag a cursor around the screen killing aliens. You can pick up power-ups here and there, such as flamethrowers and life capsules. You know, I think I could use a 20% life increase. You know, seeing as how I'm an internet reviewer. The music is unbelievably basic. Yes, it does match the movie, but still, for a game like this, you need a driving soundtrack to get the full amount of enjoyment. And this soundtrack is almost inaudible at times. Sound quality is fairly decent, but the voice acting sounds like it was done by a robot. Just listen to this! Let's go! Something's inside! So, I'm assuming that these two marines are not human, but rather highly advanced hunter-killer battle droids that are more in line with the Terminator than with Bishop. I'll be back. Now this does make some sense, as in one of the Expanded Universe novels, there was mention of a Hyperdyne company that made synthetics. And also, with the comic Alien vs. Predator vs. the Terminator, it was proven that the Aliens universe and the Terminator universe are one and the same. See what I mean about the 20% life increase? For the most part, the graphics are decent, and the enemies are all fairly detailed. Now, there are a few enemies that do look like cardboard cutouts, but it's fairly rare. It does seem to me that the graphics are basic, even for the time. And the movie stills? Ugh, they are horrible. The game begins, oddly enough, on the Sulaco. A Sulaco that is filled with hundreds of aliens. Now how did that happen? The Sulaco had no crew as it was fully automated. 
So that means there were only supposed to be three organics on the entire ship. So where these two carcasses came from, I really couldn't say. Now also, how did the alien queen even lay one egg? In the movie Aliens, all she did was climb down from the dropship, spike Bishop with her tail, and then basically run around trying to kill Newt until Ripley battled her with the power loader. At no time did she have the chance to lay even a single egg. Later in the level, you will have to face a number of automated defenses. I can only assume that the queen we are dealing with here is one of those ultra-intelligent ones as apparently she was able to take over some humans and make them reprogram the automated weapon systems to target other humans. The only problem is, there was only supposed to be three organics, and judging by this massive infestation, they really should have been the first to die. The first boss you encounter is this, quote, super face hugger. What makes it super other than its size, I couldn't really say. Although I could say it's super dumb. What is it going to face hug? King Kong? It's massive. And seeing as how the Sulaco is a human ship, one would imagine that the aliens would only breed human sized face huggers. You kill it, and for some unexplained reason, the ship crashes onto the planet. At the end of every level, there are the end tallies that tell you how many enemies you've killed, and wait a minute 22 damage claims? Objection! As you can see, Your Honor, my client was clearly attacked first and simply fired in self-defense. And finally, pending any future developments, Xenomorphs do not have any rights under U.S. law, thus making this entire case groundless. Now the game has a total of six stages, and in between each stage, there is a little transition sequence with a fairly decent piece of music. Now in this case, it looks like he is rappelling down from the Sulaco rather than simply transitioning via the EEV. We've spent years developing Nanocord, and damn it, we're gonna bloody well use it! Okay, there is so much English in this game, I'm going to stop making special mention of it and just talk like this. We crash stranded on a planet in the EEV. But it was too late. The planet had already been turned into a nest of aliens. At least in this continuity, you are not forced to sit and watch some group of idiots talk to another group of idiots, all the while staring at a wall. No, here you get to do the one thing they should have done in the movie, kill aliens! Now, your main enemies in the game are your basic alien types. Face huggers, drones, chest bursters, and... Wait, what? Killbots? War droids? How do aliens create war droids? I mean, these are pretty fancy too, with inbuilt weapons and everything. I mean, these things certainly weren't in place when they arrived, as they would have been destroyed. Also, there weren't even supposed to be any weapons on the colony in the first place. Battle droids. What's next, a killer tank? Okay, this defies all logic. How did alien-dominated humans create this monstrosity? Also, how do the Marines know that this vehicle is called the Iron Tortoise? Also, where did they get the materials to build this thing? Much less, where did they get the tools to build this thing? You know, this thing is outlandish because even the player reacts with an incredulous what the. After the Iron Tortoise is destroyed, you continue fighting around the outer colony until you come to a point where it somehow gets dark really fast for some reason. Your character dons infrared goggles to continue on. The only problem is, infrared does not actually look like that, and in addition, it was established in Aliens that xenomorphs do not show up on infrared, so it would be a pointless gesture at best. When you enter the colony proper, you face a number of what I can only assume to be are warrior aliens. They go down just as easily as any other. The boss of this level is one of the most unexpected enemies of all time. It is an... Alien. Wait, run that by me again? It's just a bigger alien sprite given the name Alien. How half-assed is that? Sega couldn't be bothered to make a queen alien sprite, they just went ahead and made a slightly bigger alien one, and gave it the name Alien? Your main enemies are aliens! You can't simply make a bigger sprite, give it the same name, and call it a boss? Wait... 
it's still better than the movie. You kill this alien, but due to this game's half-assed nature, you will have to kill him a number of times. Wade reached a prison to get some help, but the place was fated to be turned into a hell after only a few hours. You eventually meet up with some prisoners, and we get to see one of the most unintentionally hilarious parts of the game. Don't shoot! He is prisoner! Uh-oh. We need no moment. <laughs> On the subject of bad English, you may have noticed by now these little words popping up now and again on the lower left. Release your trigger. Regain the gun power. That's what it said. Do the people who made this game even know how real guns work? Observe. That is how you regain the gun power. Now I do know of a gun that will regain gun power if you release it. Yes, folks, there is a gun in existence that works in this manner. The only problem is it generally does not have the penetration power necessary to take out a xenomorph. After some time, you meet back up with the alien. You know, the slightly bigger alien sprite. After you fight him this next time, he goes down but gets right back up again. So you would imagine that this is one of those cheap stopgap boss fights. The only problem is it's not, because when he gets up, this time, your player character states, We lost him. We lost him. You know, that must be the most cunning alien of them all. He got up slowly and walked to the right. Now see, that's the Achilles heel in this model of Battle Droid, as it can only look to the left. It was designed that way, so it wouldn't burn out its neck servos. It seems that their boss is gradually changing its form, and then the curtain of the final struggle is raised. This next English defies all logic. It seems the boss of the aliens is gradually changing form? Okay, why does it always look the same? Also, the boss of the aliens? What is he, Lumberg now? Hello, Peter. What's happening? Um, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. Seriously, it's an alien queen, not a boss. Although, if the aliens have a boss, then it does make you wonder what they were saying in the wall in Aliens. Here comes Lumberg. Wait, down there. Get that chick. If Lumberg sees her, then she will have to work Saturday. <laughs> the rest of this English scroll definitely shows that this was written by a non-English speaking person. The curtain of the final struggle is raised? The curtain? Really? WHO LOCALIZED THIS?! The rest of the stage is straightforward, although you do have to face a number of killbots. But then again, if the aliens got humans to make a massive flying tank, then this isn't much of a stretch. And also, Wayland is spelled wrong. It should have an A instead of an E. You finally reach the end and face the Lumberg alien. Oh, oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, I'm also gonna need you to go ahead and come in on Sunday, too. You may think that I will work on Saturday, but instead, you will die today! And you kill Lumberg in a fitting manner by dropping molten lead on him. But wait! Oh, shit! Die! You shoot him again, and a poorly poorly rendered sequence from the movie plays. You know, the main problem with this boss fight is that it's in the game and not the movie. That's what Alien 3 should have been. Full-on alien warfare culminating in an awesome boss fight at the end. Somewhat similar to another film that I recall. You know which film that is? Aliens! How did they frag up that sequel so much? But the game doesn't end here. Oh no! we get a bit of a surprise. Some guy. Where are the samples? The samples? The samples of aliens for our bioweapon. Sorry, we've just disposed of them. What? You know too much. I must kill all of you. But who is he? He doesn't look a thing like Lance Hendrickson. 
So they had to give him some name, right? An unidentified man. I guess we'll just have to call him Bob. He's useless. <laughs> Go on. Base, base, all your base, don't belong to us. All your base, your base, 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 all your base, don't belong to us. All your base, your base, 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 all your base, don't belong to us. All your base, your base, 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 all your base. You kill Bob, who has the same pain sounds as the player character, and acid blood for some reason. Acid blood? Laziness? Or perhaps a tie-in with Alien to Labyrinth? It could be this guy. I'll just chalk it up to laziness. After you kill him, the game gets a little weird. As time passed, all records of the fearful incident were erased. The facilities were closed down, they were forced to use the trees. And almost all was forgotten, they still remember the stench. Let's go! Fire! That's right, the player characters die in the end. And that's pretty good, and totally redeems this game. There are really very few games that have you play through the entire thing and then just die at the end. That does show some originality and a little bit of creativity. Two names were deleted from the name list of the Colonial Marine. Just the one. No one knows whether they are dead or alive. They could be zombies, but we really couldn't say. In transmission. And you get to enter your initial? What, is this the arcade machine that was in the MIB headquarters? And that's Alien 3. A decent little light gun game that is half-assed in every way, except for the ending. Now, if there were a top 13 of arcade endings, this would have to definitely be number one. Now, compared to the other light gun games I've played, this one's fairly easy. I didn't have to use that many credits to get to the end. Now, for next time, I'm going to be taking a look at Alien Trilogy. But for now, this is General Lotz wishing you good Area 51. Good. Operation Wolf, or whatever makes you happy.